Hey guys, I'm Stu and thanks for tuning in to my video. Today we're going to take my MG4 to a DC supercharger. So I've had my MG4 SE standard range for a couple of weeks now and I've done a couple of road trips but this is the first one where we're going to charge from nearly a zero state of charge all the way up to 80%. I'm interested to see if we can hit that magic 117 kilowatt figure which MG says this car can achieve and also see how long it's going to take us to get to 80%. Now according to MG we can charge up to a peak speed of 117 kilowatts and the estimated charge time for a 150 kilowatt rapid charger is 39 minutes. Now seeing as I wasn't too far away I thought Ionity in Chippenham would be a great point to start. With 350 kilowatts available at the tap, I wanted to make sure I had the best opportunity possible. Now as an EV driver for a couple of years now, I understand the kind of things you have to go through to prepare that car for the higher charging speeds. Battery temperature needs to be right, it needs to be toasty. We need to get a nice low state of charge because you will not get peak rates with the battery at 50%. So to help the situation out, during my journey to the charger, I've used what's available to MG4 and to a lot of premium vehicles out there, uh, the battery preconditioning, which you can select in the battery menu. The car will use this function to heat up that battery and get it as toasty as we can. Also, we're gonna get that battery state of charge down as low as we can. And as you can see here in the video, we get it all the way down to 5%. It was a very wet and windy day today, so I didn't fancy going much further below that. And as you can see on the driver's binnacle, we've got the warning signs up to ask us to charge the car. Now, it did ask me prior to this point to reduce the power. Um, I selected no because I wanted to use as much power as I can before I got to the charger. One other thing I also tried uh, prior to arriving at the charger was to do a bit of what's called yo-yoing. So that's constantly foot down, foot off the accelerator as much as you can. Anything to try and gain as much temperature in that battery pack. It is 11 degrees outside, so we want the best possible chance to get this peak speed. Also today was my first ever opportunity at using the app Bonnet. Bonnet is a charging app with access to thousands of charging points across the UK. What I like about Bonnet is they are the payment window and the charging start and finishing point of your charging experience. So everything's done through that app. And as you can see here, I'm on the Ionity charger and I've selected the station and it's as easy as plugging in and pressing start to charge. And they also offer a flat fee charging price for all of the chargers on their network, which is great if you want to use a charger like Ionity. So now we're just going to plug the charger into the car and as you can see the communication between the charger the car and the app is seamless quick and efficient But this is the popcorn moment. Has everything I've done paid off? Will we get that 117 kilowatt peak charge during the charging curve? Ideally, it would have been great to start the charge at least 0%. That would have given us the best opportunity to get this peak rate. But we're at 5%, it's not bad at all. Let's see how we get on. And very quickly we start to see the power climb. And we're already up to 40 kilowatts straight away. Up to 50 to 60. And I've highlighted here on the screen so you can see the, the amount of power we're receiving. And within a minute we're already up to 74 kilowatts. Let's keep it going, keep it going. It's always nice, even though we can see on this on the charger here, 
what the kilowatt charge speed is. Let's go in the car and see what the car tells us. And now we're inside the car, we can actually see on the display there that we're already on 80 kilowatts and that is rising very, very steadily. Now we're already up to 84 kilowatts and still within the two minutes. Now while that ramps up slowly, I'm going to ask you to cast your eye over to this chart I've created. Now this is a very rough and loose guide of how many miles to expect based on your stage of charge. Now the figures at the top reflect the WLTP cycle for the MG4 SE standard range which is 218 miles. And then underneath is my rough version of it based on my driving habits of October this year in 2022. And I think this is a really good guide and something useful to have because when you're generally on a road trip or if you're doing a longer distance, sometimes all you need to do is to stop and charge to get home or your destination. And with this reference point, and a good bit of efficient driving, then you should be able to obtain these kind of figures. However, I would expect those figures to reduce slightly more during the winter months. So let's go back to the car and check on the charging power receiving. And as you can see, inside the car and on the charger, there's a slight discrepancy, about two kilowatts. And this is actually completely normal. If you're using a DC high power charger, there's gonna be losses from aspects like heat loss, and that will be between the charger and the car. Now, using my handy little chart as a guide, I'm going to put up on the screen a point of reference of the time we're charged for, how many miles that is, and obviously the state of charge. And that's based on the WLTP cycle and also my own guesstimates. I also wanted to just show you on this particular charger, it also shows us the volts and the amps. And this is quite important because this is how we work out how much power we're going to get from the charger into the car. And there's some simple maths we can do for this and that's taking the voltage, times it by the amps, divide it by 1000 and that gives us our kilowatt power. Now unfortunately it doesn't look like we've hit that 117 kilowatt peak charge today. But we can see that we are starting to tail off on the charging curve. And this is completely normal and it's what we expect. Anything between kind of 60 and 80% we start to see the decrease in power to protect those battery cells. And as you can see there we are down to 28 kilowatts, 38 minutes and 80% of charge. Which is roughly 144 miles on my chart and 174 miles on the WLTP. And we can also finish the charge and stop it using the Bonnet app by hitting the stop charging button. Now we didn't get our peak 117 kilowatts, which I was really hoping for. Let's have a look at what we've learned from this DC charging session. Now earlier we were looking at the MG brochure and I just want to refer back to it again and have a look at the charging times. And on the brochure it does say a charge on a 150 kilowatt DC public rapid charger 10 to 80 percent should take 39 minutes. Now we did it in 38 minutes but bear in mind that was from 5 percent and if I go back through the data I have from my video I can see from 10% onwards it actually took 35 minutes in total. So that's four minutes quicker than the advertised time, which I think is absolutely brilliant. And remember, that's without hitting the peak speeds we were hoping for. So that leaves us with the pros and cons of today's DC charge. First of all, the pros. And as I just touched on, the fact that we can charge the car quicker than it's advertised is an absolute positive. Well done MG, that's great. And that will be incredibly useful for a lot of people. The second thing is battery preconditioning. Now this is a bit of a luxury and not available in all vehicles, so to have that on the MG4 is absolutely brilliant and we can use that to preheat the battery. And it's also good if you want to warm that battery up for a more efficient drive on a frosty morning. Thirdly, the public charging experience. 
Public charging should be easy and straightforward without any complications. I know this isn't always the case, but it's a good start. And lastly, the charging curve. Ideally, when you're charging your car, you want the rate of power from the charger to your car to be a consistent rate throughout the charge. And that helps manage your expectations of how long it's going to take to charge the car and when it's the right time to unplug and move on. Now over to the cons. Now I'm really disappointed I didn't get to that 117 kilowatt mark. Um, I felt like I did everything to try and get to it. It didn't happen today and maybe that's for another day. Maybe the battery wasn't warm enough, maybe the, there was a problem with the charger, maybe it's with the car, it may be just the chemistry in this LFP battery pack and the cells just aren't getting warm enough. But these figures are really crucial because the consumer will use these as their guide when they are purchasing or leasing a vehicle and that choice will be dependent on those speeds so if we can't get near those speeds then that could be an issue. And the second con really is, but I am kind of nitpicking here, is the accuracy of the data which MG provide the consumer market. Now it's all nice under promising and over delivering but a lot of people make decisions based on these figures and I think consumers will really appreciate it if, if the data is a lot more accurate. It really could be the difference between stepping into an electric car for the first time or having to not spend more money on a more premium vehicle to achieve certain figures. Now even though it wasn't what I was expecting today, it was still a good DC charge. Um, I think there's a lot to take from this which is positive. And I look forward to doing another charge again soon. And I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments how you've gotten with Charger Door MG4. Uh, what kind of peak speeds have you got? Have you got the standard range, the long range? And it'd be interesting to see what the difference is between the two battery chemistries. Obviously the short range is LFP and the long range is NMC te technology. So I just want to say a big thanks for tuning in. Uh, I hope you can take something from the video or at least enjoy it anyway and thanks for all the wonderful comments and the noob subscribers, I really do appreciate it so thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one soon.